Alrighty, everyone. Welcome to our first BPSA chat of the year. Oh, yes. Um, so again, thank you all for joining us to our uh, VPSA chat for the 2019-2021 Biennium. Uh, my name is Bonko, your Vice President for Student Affairs. Uh, very excited to, to be hosting this. Um, just to give you a little bit of information and background on the program itself. It started, I believe, a few Bienniums ago. And, um, you know, after some conversations, we wanted to, we wanted to um, figure out different ways to improve um, the way that we bring these conversations. So um, after some discussions, we thought it might be best that I don't talk at you guys for, for a while, uh, and rather we bring in voices uh, from Active Brothers and from the experts of the fraternity to really lead these discussions so that you are getting different perspectives, so that you are getting the most out of this. Now, I'm gonna ask again, um, if you haven't already done so, to please introduce yourself, name and chapter in the chat box, and to please mute yourselves. So the, the majority of this uh, panel, um, those of you who have registered have uh, submitted questions. So we're gonna be focusing most of our time on those questions. And um, if you do have another question that pops, us, uh, pops up, please do type that in the chat box as well. So my role for this conversation will be um, emceeing the, the uh, panel, but also to kind of play the tech slash, you know, back of the um, behind the scenes. So if you do have questions, please type um, on the chat box and we will keep track of that. And uh, for those of uh, people who can't um, come or those who are jumping off early, uh, this is being recorded and we're are gonna try to uh, put this on our YouTube channel for future reference as well. So um, I have already introduced myself, so uh, I will uh, hand it over to Jessica to, uh, and the rest of the panel to introduce themselves. Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us this evening. I'm Jessica Lee. I'm your National Vice President for Colonization and Membership. Um, thank you to Bong for setting this up this evening and to all of you for giving up your time uh, to join us um, and especially to our, our three other panelists who will be imparting their wisdom with you or to you uh, this evening. Um, I popped my contact information in the chat, my email and cell, so everybody has that as well, uh, but welcome. Hi, I'm Katerina Lyle. I'm the current president of the Delta Sigma chapter, and I am the recent vice president of membership, former as well. Hi, I'm Hannah Cheeseman. Um, I'm currently the Southwest District VPM. I have been last year, and two years ago, I was the VPM for the Delta chapter at OU. And I'm also currently serving on the curriculum committee. Um, I am president membership from the University. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Cool. So uh, thank you all for those introductions. Um, and if people do cut out, oh, again, we do apologize. We will do our best to kind of, you know, clarify what people are saying. But let's go ahead and get into the questions. And again, uh, as we're, um, we are talking, again, this is an open conversation between the panelists. If you do have questions, um, you want some follow up, please do type those in the chat box and please keep yourselves muted um, so that we don't hear you heavy breathing into the mic. Fantastic. So the first question for our panelists, and I will start with um, Katarina here. Uh, how The question is, how can brothers who are currently in marching band help more in recruitment? And do you have any advice on retaining interest in the spring semester when marching band season um, is over? All right, so um, a big part of recruitment I know is often looking for people within the marching band and I think for a lot of schools that this recruitment base which is like the group of people who you tend to choose from every year is made up of the incoming freshmen into the marching band and I think that by taking the brothers who are in the chapter who might not be involved in marching band and using them to kind of connect with this other group of people who are also not in marching band you're tapping an entire 
potential market, so to speak, of more candidates to join. People don't have to be in marching band to join the chapter. So if you notice that you're finding it really, really easy to recruit people in marching band, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and look into the concert ensembles and look for those people who are also not involved in that uh, to do it, to be inviting them to the recruitment events. It's also, if you find that um, it's not necessarily working out to um, invite these people because like it's more margin band centered, it might be a good idea to reconsider how you're recruiting in that way and also how you're um, presenting your chapter if you're kind of just seen as like the marching band support maybe there's other things that you can that you can do to get involved with that awesome uh, Hannah any thoughts on that uh yeah so I'm currently not in marching band because uh, I'm currently a graduate student and uh, therefore kind of dying all the time so um, Kappa Kappa Psi is still in my life and I'm very happy about that, but not able to be an active marcher. Um, so I think the best way to involve people and that whether they're in marching band or if they're in marching band and they're just not involved, um, this is an answer I have to a lot of the questions, but is committee involvement, I think. Um, because if you have a diverse committee for your membership committee or even if you don't have a formal committee and you just have people helping you out with things like recruitment events or membership lessons and things like that um, that can get them involved and it gets their friends involved and it ends up just being full circle of where everyone starts going to everything to support each other because if my best friends on the service committee and she's putting together a service event, then I'm gonna go to it to support her. And same thing goes for recruitment and um, just making sure that those brothers still feel involved and updated on things, even though you're not seeing them every day at marching band practice. And also at recruitment events, go up and be like, hey, this is a member of my section. Like, she's really awesome. I think you guys would get along great because I find it really intimidating to go up to people hi, I'm someone you don't know, and I'm four years older than you, and things like that. It's, it gets a lot more intimidating. So that's my suggestion. Awesome, thanks. Curtis, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, so obviously encouraging them to still go to recruitment events, things like that. Um, be anchored even to further being more involved, looking to different members, um, and creating different roles during recruitment week besides being brothers, so delegating different to them. Um, and then here, I think mean, greatly most of all, was about opportunity for leadership. Um, and that's the best that I've never heard of until. Um, to the road with them, but um, we encourage them to do things that um, they don't have the opportunity to do or you know, sorry Curtis I think I think you're cutting in and out of the I think your okay. Wi-Fi is cutting in and out sorry <laughs> that's fine um yeah back home in my chapter um something I noticed last Semester is that our jazz bands don't have the same like nice looking folders at our concert. Um, I was really glad I asked the brother if it is in a machine band. Um, so he talked to the director of the jazz programs and he had a working and he's trying So it's kind of over things. Okay, no worries. Um, so thank you all for that. Um, so again, you know, as we are going through this this process um, in recruitment, um, you know, there are definitely going to be different ways for us to 
um, do this because a lot of this, you know, is dependent on the culture with our within our own band program and our um, our chapter as as well. So another question here in regards to um, recruitment um, is what are some good ways to recruit potential membership candidates outside of marching band setting? Uh, and I guess to be more specific here, this is for chapters that um, have a majority of brothers that are from marching band, but they're trying to broaden their base. They just don't know how to do so yet. So uh, we'll start with um, Han on this one. Yes, this is such a common problem with like at least like 80% of the chapters in my district at least and including my own chapter every year, everyone's like, oh, we need to recruit more from the concert bands. But the thing I always point out to them is um, at OU, all the GAs are hired to do things like set up the chairs and we can help a little bit, but that might be one or two extra people and they get paid to do a lot of the things that we, like that you might think that we'd be able to help out with. And so a lot of our contribution goes to um, things like stage hands for concerts and um, handing out programs for concerts, which is also rotated with the three other music organizations on campus. So it's not necessarily something that really sets us apart and that you don't really, if you're in that concert band, you don't necessarily feel super served by your Kappa Kappa Psi chapter there. Um, so you're not obviously not going to recruit a ton of people that way. Um, you, if that's the case for your chapter, I think going out of your way to maybe write nice, encouraging notes for them. I know some people have like put notes on the stands like during um, midterms and finals that encourage them to like have a good concert or keep on practicing and things like that. Um, maybe look into the practice rooms where a lot of um, non-marching band people might be that are still involved in concert bands um, and most of all just reach out to your music majors because they still interact with those people even though they're not in marching band so utilize those people um, I think that's it awesome thank you um, other, other thoughts uh, from panelists uh, you guys have experience with um, where your chapter is mostly uh, members from marching band and you're trying to reach out to um, other uh, band programs or other um, bands within your program. Yeah, I definitely agree with Hannah and I think um, a lot of the southern districts deal with this being the big marching band um, schools and I noticed that when I first started school here that my chapter was very, very much marching band brothers and we've kind of moved away from that um, just as our chapter has kind of become an older group who aren't in marching band anymore. But one thing that I did notice was times that we did recruit people outside of marching band, it tended to be in more of an individual recruiting setting. So getting to know people on an individual basis, um, picking out people as opposed to just trying to find like large groups of people to invite to recruitment events, but maybe smaller, maybe the person you sit next to in your concert band class or just really like zoning in on those like few people and trying to make those individual relationships with them and then inviting them and making sure that your recruitment events are inclusive outside of marching band. Um, something that I really did just dis discuss and um, maybe we'll bring up later is just about like making sure that your marching uh, or that your recruitment events are more geared towards everybody as opposed to just one kind of person. So that's, that's my two cents. Yeah, awesome. I think, um, oh, sorry, you unmuted me. So I thought that was my cue to hop in. Um, I think that Katarina, you bring up such a good point because um, I think that when it comes to marching band, you're spending a lot of time with the same group of people and you have that time before school starts. So I think it's a lot, it, it's easier almost to build those relationships in marching band. So the recruiting feels, um, it's more passive because it's more natural. Um, and then I think when it comes to concert band, we have to be a lot more intentional. And so I think one, it's really noticing as members, the people that stand out that are in those other ensembles. So if we play in those ensembles, really noticing the people that do stand out and choosing, hey, this person would be a good member. Um, 
But I think that that personal touch is so important because, and even just whether you're recruiting in marching band or concert band, that personal touch is so important because we invite our members to be a part of Kappa Kappa Psi. And so we should be always looking for great people. We should be extending that hand of fellowship. Uh, that's, I mean, explicitly written in our documents. And so um, I, I think that sometimes for some of us, it can be really uncomfortable to do that active recruitment. So having a discussion with a chapter and doing some role playing of what it feels like to have a conversation with someone one-on-one um, -on -one to talk about Kappa Kappa Psi and what we believe, making that conversation be about our values and about the things that we do and then the reason why I choose to do them, I being the member. Um, and so not just being, hey, do you wanna come set up some stands, but rather this is what Kappa Kappa Psi is about and this is what we believe and I believe in this too. And I think that you would be a great addition to our chapter. I think you totally have something to offer. And let me talk to you about why I'm involved and see if you'd be interested in joining us in a recruitment event. Um, and so then that ask is very personal and people feel wanted. And so they're probably more likely to come to your event Whereas just doing a general announcement and saying, hey, anybody interested in the fraternity, come to so-and-so recruitment event. Because I might be like, well, I don't even know if they like me. But if I get somebody and I get that personal attention, that might be like, okay, they, they want me. And, and it should be special because our second purpose is that we honor outstanding members. So um, we should be personal um, when we're having those conversations. Sweet. Curtis, you want to give it another try? Um, I honestly think that everything that everyone's been saying is just what I would say. Um, but a little bit of adding on, just like transfer what you would do in the marching band setting into concert band, into, you know, campus life, whatever that is. So if you would go and talk to them about a certain thing during marching band, whether it be psi or not, do the same thing. Just be as genuine as you can. Um, people read into that a lot more than, um, I don't know, being like, hey, I'm in this organization. Just come come with me. Come see this thing. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's it. Just... Awesome. No, thank you. Okay, so for our next question here, um, in the same thought process, in the same sort of question, but just to specify here, um, a question that we received is, um, how should I, as a, as a VPM, reach out to... Um, potential strong leaders um, in other ensembles and let's say that let's say if you're not in these ensembles um, what are some suggestions that you have for for these VPMs to reach out to potential strong leaders or even to get to know who these leaders are like how do you go about that um, I will start with Curtis this time um, I would say that the biggest thing is um, use your chapter, use your brothers as a stepping stone. Ask them to be a little bit more social in um, their different settings than they would normally be. Um, if they see someone that they think would fit well into your chapter, um, ask them to like at least go up and talk to them about, um, again, being genuine. Either... Um, about KKSI itself, about their views on uh, musicianship, leadership, that kind of thing. Um, I would personally think that's the biggest thing to get that kind of, um, at least the stepping stones into getting that kind of variety and diversity in your chapter. Awesome, thanks. Anna, any thoughts on that? Um, yeah, I think what Curtis said, I definitely agree with. That's not as big of a problem in my chapter, so I can't personally re relate with how I've recruited that because we just naturally recruit that. Um, I think when you when it comes to other majors, you really I suggest you don't be too judgmental about musicianship, just because they have a chemistry test or they have a twelve page research paper. Or who knows what? What they've got going on in their lives um and i know i personally picked up an instrument two years ago and all of my brothers were super supportive and helpful rather than putting me down because i was struggling to play boomer sooner for the first week you know like i think just 
looking for those leaders in personality and tendencies rather than um, rather than having other signs other than musicianship, I guess, when it comes to other majors. Uh, that's that's my that's my advice and my experience. But honestly, my chapter is like every other major and then some. OK, awesome. Well, um, I guess for Katarina and for Jessica, if you guys want to jump in here, I'll, I'll shift the question just a bit. Um, so when it comes to, let's say, the other ensembles, um, what experience or suggestions do you have for uh, building these connections with potentially the band directors and the sponsors to sort of maybe build in some sort of system so where they can let you know that there is an outstanding band member, uh, there is an outstanding, you know, musician. Um, do you guys have experience with developing these type of relationships? Um, I come from a small program so um all these other folks on here on our little panel are these big huge programs and i'm very jealous of that because i don't know what that feels like um so lock haven maybe 60 70 in the band uh, the biggest our chapter has been in 40 years was when i was chapter president we had 21 members and people about died um so i came into a chapter of seven um so we um and a majority non-major. We were majority non-majors. So actually what we didn't understand was the music majors um, because they had to practice all the time. And so um, I think that one of the things that's so important, and this kind of really doesn't speak to exactly what you were saying, Bong, but just a piece of this um, is reflecting on your recruitment. Um, so when I do my membership selection workshop, that's one of the things that we talk about is think about your recruitment. Who showed up? Think about gender. Think about um uh d uh demographics so who who your who your people are um think about majors think about all those things and look at your chapter and see who are the people that you're attracting um because it might be that you're pigeonholing yourself without realizing it like, like you're getting only certain sections of the band for example the reason i joined kappa kappa psi was because the rest of the percussion section was in and the two new people with me were also in the percussion section and we were like oh all our friends are in this we should do this too so, and that's okay because they, you can get great people that way, but I think it's important to look back and say, are we doing recruitment events that are reflective of our values? Are we making pers personal connections with a variety of people? When we look at colony applications, one of the things that we look at is, is the colony uh, members reflective of the diversity of the band program. And so I think that that's a really good thing to consider when you think about your recruitment because your chapter should reflect your band program. And if it's not, you know, just asking yourself like, why do we seem to get more um, men than women or vice versa? Um, why do we seem to only get brass people? Why do we X, Y, Z? And just ask yourself those questions and then I would just ask some band members, people that might be in the band that maybe aren't interested to just say, hey, um, what do you think about this recruitment event? Or, you know, you're not interested in Kappa Kappa Psi, why? Is it the events that we do? Is it our, the perception the band has of us? And just kind of ask some questions that might help um, give the chapter an idea about who is coming and why to help you make sure that you are recruiting everyone that you are open to everyone, that you're building an inclusive atmosphere that people want to become a part of us, because it's okay if they want to say no, if Kappa Kappa Psi isn't for them, but we don't want to give off the perception that we're turning people away. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, Katarina, anything, um, any extra thoughts to that? Yeah, I actually found this question to be one of my favorites just because any chance I get to talk about being a non-major, I absolutely love. By the way, go accounting. <laughs> um, but if I think that if you want to reflect on your recruitment, as Jessica said, I think that that's one of the most amazing things you can do for your chapter is to look at who is in your chapter and look at, I think I probably wrote the word demographics down five or six times just because um, I think that looking into what it, what it is you're doing that is creating this atmosphere that attracts certain people is going to reflect on who you recruit. And uh, my actual, my, my chapter BPM currently in my little Centauri 
who's on this call right now, said something extremely good uh, at the beginning of this year that I had actually never heard before. And it was that you, who you recruit is a direct reflection of who you are. So who it is that you're recruiting and who's coming to your recruitment events are a direct reflection of what kind of, um, what kind of image you're putting out for your chapter. So if you're noticing that you're um, getting a lot in a lot of music majors and that non-majors seem to not be as interested, it's probably because you're putting out the kind of uh, image and the kind of perception that that's what kind of organization you are. And I talked a lot about this was something that my chapter kind of went through in the past couple of years as we shifted from a mostly music major centered group into a more non major center group, um, which, or even, um, which is that I think it's very important for us non majors to understand that we are in a music organization and that it's important for us to learn how to relate. But I also think it's important to the music majors to understand that not everybody's musical interest and musical connection is the same. And I also talked about how interest manifests itself in very different ways for very different people. And I think that acknowledging that people's connection with music is different depending on, you know, for me, it's not a career. It's something that I very much enjoy and I'm connected to it through Kappa Kappa Psi. And for other people, it is a career and it's their entire life but acknowledging the differences in those and then seeing the connection underneath and, and what we have um, to share and for me to understand how that would feel to be in that headspace and for a music major to understand how it would feel to be in my shoes is a very, very good way to connect with each other. And regardless of if they're your active brother or someone you're trying to recruit, I think that taking yourself out of your own bubble of perception of how you how you interest yourself in music and thinking of it from the opposite person's shoes, I think will really, really help you to understand how, um, how you're putting, like what, you're, what perception you're putting out of yourself, which then will let you see who you're recruiting and why, why they're attracted to you and, and why certain other people are not, so. Awesome, thank you so much. So um, I, just, I just got this, this question here, and before we shift over to membership education itself, um, I think this would be a good question to kind of segue as well. Um, the question is, you know, as a VPM, there are VPMs out there who lean more towards the recruitment side that, you know, they're more, I guess, extroverted um, or, you know, they love that, you know, making those connections. But then there are also VPMs out there who prefer the more of that lesson planning, the teaching aspect. Um, if you feel yeah, as a VPM who feels, you know, uh, one way or the other, how can you build a support system around uh, within your chapter to help in the area that you're lacking? Does anyone have experience with that? Anna? Yeah, so I'm definitely like the logistical, I mean, I'm an engineer, so uh, definitely logistical planning is like, my thing and so going up in front of people and being super bubbly and happy and um trying to convince everyone to come is not necessarily my strong suit and i certainly recognize that and that's where my committee involvement answer comes in again but i think that if you strategically pick people out to help you you know what your weaknesses are hopefully and if you don't then ask your best friend because they'll tell you in a second um, but that you can fit, pick out, like, I am not like super bubbly and excited and I don't necessarily show how much I love Kappa Kappa Psi at the surface, but I know that, for example, Noah does and he, he loves it, everything he does with Kappa Kappa Psi and he shows it like on the surface 24 seven and he can go up and announce this or having people that are excited about the planning their own recruitment events that are hopefuls for future exec positions, things like that. That's where they can get the benefit of getting to grow. And also you're asking them for help because you're not gonna be 100% perfect well-rounded and that that's okay. Your chapter elected you knowing that. That's awesome, thank you. I definitely want to pop in here. Um, so I feel super strongly about this. Um, membership education and recruitment is the responsibility of the chapter. The chapter should be engaged and give their interest and their constancy 
their interest and their constancy to the people that they are giving an invitation to. So that means that when we are engaged in that process of recruitment and we say something like, well, I don't really know that person with that well, then as a brother, we need to take the initiative to give our interest and our constancy to get to know that person. And the same thing in membership education. If we are, are watching lessons and we see a candidate that's struggling, then we as brothers need to extend the hand of fellowship and give our interest and our constancy to those members to help them be successful. We choose these people. And so we have to be in 110% to make sure that we're successful. And especially our VPMs, because our VPMs are leading the effort. So we are, we need to make sure that we provide that support to our VPMs, whether it's someone to bounce ideas off of, helping to set things up. Um, I suggest doing things like, um, especially if you have a big chapter, have brothers sign up for events that they're gonna assist with. So if you don't have a membership committee or if you want to get different people involved, have all your dates for recruitment and your membership education lessons. And depending on the size of your chapter, maybe it's you have to sign up to help assist for two events and get everybody engaged in the chapter one, because by doing so, you're going to provide an opportunity for leadership for people that might not be officers or maybe want are aspiring VPM. So you're providing some leadership opportunities there. But two, especially in the lessons, um, it's a smaller group of people and you're able to have more natural interactions with the candidates. That isn't a forced can interview. Um, so creating opportunities in the chapter to provide the support, but then also sometimes we just have to remind our brothers that you should be engaged in this process. Everybody is responsible for bringing in members because if something goes wrong with membership education or, or for some reason, if the chapter um, were to go on investigative hold for something related to membership education, it's not just the VPM, it's the chapter that's held responsible for membership education. So we have to remember that we have to be all in, we should be all in, everybody should be engaged. And that if we're not seeing that from our chapter members, that just providing some reminders or providing some very structured ways for people to engage, because sometimes people aren't sure, um, is definitely important and, and should be a part of the process. That's awesome, thank you. Anyone else have any thoughts on that, Curtis? Yeah, um, so I would definitely say I'm, I'm more, um, I really like the teaching aspect a lot more. Um, the logistics are sometimes can be very overwhelming and stuff, so I'll ask the support of um, other brothers to help me with that. But um, for the most part, our recruitment week is mostly planned um, not by me, not by our activities chair, but our whole committee. We try to plan through everything that we're going to do. And I like to think of it as we have these different events going on with an idea of what we want to learn from them um, and what we're doing. But we're the, the committee, uh, myself, the chair, we're kind of just hosting them for both the chapter and the people that are involved. Um, this is just, oh, while wow, I edited GBM prior to the, to the, the week, the recruitment week, um, I would probably go over some things that we need to, that brothers need to think about when talking to these interested band members. Um, but in a way, we're just kind of hosting things for the chapter and the people that are interested so they can have their own interactions, their own get togethers. Um, and if we can have an activity going on based around music or leadership or service project even, we try to do that every other week, um, then yeah, we'll try to have that put together, but yeah. Awesome, thank you. Got to read anything from you? That's okay, <laughs> you don't have to jump in. <laughs> Okay, awesome. So we'll shift from from recruitment a bit here to to over to the membership education side. So uh, one of the first questions we got was just sort of a more generic question, but I think it, it is important. So the question is, why do you or uh, what do you do when your classroom becomes too boring? So anyone would like to jump in? I can start here um, because I'm fresh off of teaching from last year. Um, this is something I massively, massively struggled with in the beginning. I have never had a desire to teach for a life career and I have zero experience with teaching. So 
when I kind of really sat down and realized that that was what I was going to be doing, I was petrified. But something that really, really helped was number one, admitting that it's totally okay to ask for help from everybody. And number two, that it's also okay to be boring sometimes. And I think that that was one of the things that um, really, really helped me in the end. So uh, obviously there are a lot of different ways and I think I'll kind of let the other panelists because they have more specific examples. I'll let them uh, kind of discuss the ways that you can interact. But what I found was the easiest thing was to just speak to the MC class. It's their class. It wasn't my class as VPM. It was their class. They were the ones learning and they're the future of the chapter. So it's very important that since they're the ones receiving the information that I teach it in a way that they are going to um, digest and that they are going to absorb all of the material the way that works for them. So whether or not it was learning a new way of teaching or just abandoning everything that I thought I knew about teaching, it was all about just finding out what kind of learners they were, they were and what worked for them. And for some types of lessons, certain activities just really didn't click and they really just wanted me to lecture. And other times they really did not want that and they really just wanted to read on their own or play a game or something. Um, but it was a lot of asking them for their feedback. And I think sometimes when we get into these positions, when we deal with the power struggle of being an active member or an officer uh, with MCs, we often feel like we have to appear like we're totally figured out and we're know exactly what we're doing in front of the MCs. And it's just not realistic and it's just not true. And I think being honest with them about that helps them to kind of connect with you and and to understand that it's their environment. It's, it's their classroom to learn. So I, I really think it's making it centered on the MCs and less on yourself as a teacher is going to help a lot. I love that. Thank you. Anybody else? When it comes to classroom is too boring. Thoughts? All right. So um, as an engineering student, I don't know if this is the same across schools, but I have a bunch of professors that just put paragraph after paragraph on some slides and go through them. And it is the worst, the worst time of my life at times, unless it's like just this amazing professor that can make it work. Um, so that was kind of what I had as my basis going in. And it actually, I, I didn't do like full on paragraphs. I did bullet points because uh, I'm not insane. But it was really a good way to base, base everything off of is start out simple and then try a few different things your first lesson or two or even during the orientation meeting. See how they like to interact with you. Um, I always had actives in the room and so if I was like what do you guys think about this and my MC class was dead silent I'd get the actives involved I'd be like talk about a service product project that you did or talk about x y or z that's relevant to the lesson because they have the actual experience and they're going to have something to contribute um and then the other thing I have written down is Kahoot so I found out after all of my MCs went through all the process that they were using Kahoot to like test each other on things like the Creed. And I had no, absolutely no idea. That was just them when they would hang out or when they would plan their service event, they were doing that. And I was like, wow, that's insane. Like I had absolutely no clue that they were doing, doing that. And it really kept things fun for them because then they transferred things outside of the classroom into their everyday lives where they're like, oh, let's say the creed for fun, because I guess that was fun for them. Um, but really, uh, just, just getting people involved. And if you think that you're a boring teacher, ask your, ask your actives for feedback or ask one of them to go up and teach a certain thing that they're passionate about, because you can stand up for hours and talk about something you're passionate about. Awesome, I appreciate that. Um, I know Jessica is pretty uh, boring herself and I think she has a lot of experience with this, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Jessica, what are your thoughts on this? You're dead to me, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so a few things, a few strategies. Um, professionally in my life, I'm a director of curriculum and instruction. Um, I went to school to be a teacher. Um, I was a principal, assistant principal, 
Um, so this is my wheelhouse and I coach teachers. Um, so um, I love that idea that Hannah mentioned about bringing other people in to teach. Um, and I wanna throw out that idea of team teaching. So um, when we were doing, when we were actually writing The Road to Wisdom, Evan and I piloted the leadership lesson and we team taught it. So the first time that we did it, we changed a whole bunch of stuff in the middle and then ended up rewriting that lesson. So if you have somebody that you have good chemistry with, um, that enjoys teaching or is passionate about particular lessons, then plan, plan something out with them and team teach with them. And then that way the pressure isn't always on you, um, you know, to stand up and perform, but you're able to showcase some other people in the chapter. And the other thing that I would say is we've laid out the road to wisdom in a way so that somebody that is not a teacher could follow it and be successful but you don't have to do that lesson the way we have it laid out. So as long as you are looking at the very first page of the lesson that says the summary of the week's information, if you're hitting that information in the lesson, we don't care how you teach it. So if you think all the activities are terrible and they might be terrible for that class that you have, don't teach it that way. You can change the order, you can change the activities, the way that you present the information. Um, one of the examples that I use is the lesson um, about the chapter constitution. So if you don't like the jigsaw way to do that, that's fine. You could have, give each person a section and have them present on it. You could have your chapter parliamentarian come in and talk about it. It doesn't have to be the way that it's laid out. And I think sometimes um, there's a misconception that we have to do it exactly the way that it is there and you don't have to. So I definitely wanted to throw that out there because um, in regards to something being boring, you have to get people to define the why. What is it about something being boring so that you can figure out how to make it better? So something that you can do at the end of every lesson is do an exit ticket. Um, I encourage VPMs to build, like get like a little plastic box and kind of have some tools that you bring with you to every meeting. So um, sticky notes, um, I use colored lined paper because it's just fun. Why not get colored? Um, but lined paper, blank paper, some markers, um, just some stuff to have on hand in case you want to do something off the fly. Um, but at the end of a lesson, just give them a sticky note. One thing that you love today, one thing that you wish was different. And ask them that at the, at the end of every lesson. And that's going to give you an idea of what they like and what they don't. Um, the other thing that you can do before you start, so right after first degree or maybe even during the candidate orientation meeting, um, online there are a ton of learning interest surveys. And actually, um, Bong, I don't know how we're passing out resources after, but this is something I can pass on because I have it professionally. Um, but there's learning interest surveys that you can ask people, how do you learn? Do you, do you prefer to use technology? Um, I had thrown in the chat that Curtis made a whole course for the Road to Wisdom and they did everything online and that was awesome. So different and innovative. Um, so if you have a class that loves technology, then interact that way. Or if you have a class that really thrives on the class discussion, then do more of the class discussion and just tell them, hey, this is the information I want you to read in the candidate book before you come so that when you get there, we can base our time, use our time to have discussion. You have the flexibility to do any of that. And if you have questions and you're not sure about how to make those adjustments, or if you can, just reach out and I'm happy to help clarify things or just email curriculum at kkside.org. But if something is boring, you definitely want to find out the why and ask the candidates because it might not be you. It might just be you're falling into the, I'm teaching things the same way and we have to shake it up or um, they don't like fill in the blank. So that's great, fill in it for them. Um, we have the flexibility to make all those changes. Awesome, thank you. Um, so I guess in regards to, you know, let's talk a little bit more about the road to wisdom then. Um, I think we can all agree that there are people out there who aren't a fan of it, just to be very transparent. But again, like Jessica said, there are ways to go about this to still make it work for your chapter. So I'd like to hear uh, from our panelists, you know, specific things that you have done that um, our, our guests can take away um, and can maybe implement. What are things that you have done to make the road to wisdom work for you as you are have been as you have been integrating it into your uh, chapter membership education? Uh, anyone can start. I know. Okay. I don't have a ton to add to this because I kind of made my chapter go cold turkey on the road to wisdom. 
because it was very different. But one thing I did that kind of helped that transition actually happen and no one died or threw a fit, or some people may have thrown fits, but not in front of me, um, is I came into the fall and I was like, listen, here's everything that we are doing in regards to membership. Um, Cause you might have to present your calendar to your exec team um, or your committee or however you do it as a chapter, but doing it to the full chapter and saying, here's what we're doing, here's the lessons, here's what we're going over from step one makes it a lot easier because then if there's no, oh, so we're not doing this anymore as the year goes on. Like they know from chapter one, two or three that you're cutting out this thing that your chapter has done for years because under new guidelines, it's considered hazing or you can get it approved through an activity review form, but you might, um, you might not be able to for some, like my chapter used to interview every single person. And that was the biggest thing we had to cut out because obviously interviewing like 50 people and however many weeks is not feasible. So just doing that from step one is what helped us actually not necessarily fall in love with the road to wisdom, but we complied, we did everything right year one. Awesome, thank you. Anybody else? Ask specific Curtis. Um, yeah, so likewise, I guess I guess it was um, kind of an understatement. I would say that our chapter before the road to wisdom had a, um, a decent membership education program, nothing too like extreme or anything. It was just like, oh, we had to comply to a lot of people were thinking we had to comply to like whatever um, we were given now. Um, a few of us kind of read through it and thought that this was good because it gave a very like detailed outline of what we needed. And then we decided that we could just add things from what we had on. So we sent in the activity, activity reviews. Um, the first semester it happened, it was kind of on the fly trying to get it together, but um, otherwise everything else kind of worked out. Um, I guess in terms of like talking to the chapter about the road to wisdom, the biggest thing that I said, and it was kind of a gimmick kind of thing was like, we're making the road to wisdom our own. I'm, we're going to make it Gamma News Road to Wisdom. And that kind of gave them a sense of ownership over it. Um, and then I talked about different ways that we could do that in terms of like, we have an alphabet step, like a lot of other chapters do. Um, so we're like, during this lesson, we're going to do this for that. And we're going to learn the Greek alphabet with whatever else is, else is going on. And a lot of people like that. Um, and in terms of growing from our previous MEP, um, with the road to wisdom, it was kind of just like um, trying to add in things that I personally thought would be good ideas, getting this um, advice from past vice presidents, from other people in the chapter that wanted to see this and this and that added, um, and then trying to put them all together into this concise thing, um, I guess was the, was the biggest thing that, that we went through this past semester or so. Um, yeah, and I guess to add on that, uh, what Jessica Lee was mentioning, what Jessica was mentioning was, um, yeah, I tried to put, we have, we use Canvas, um, which is a like an organizational tool um, on the computer online. A lot of other universities use it. We use that and you're allowed to put your own organization on there. So I did it specifically for the candidates since we already have Facebook and Slack and all these other things for our, our chapter. Um, in there, um, I'm able to put everything involving the lessons, whether it be a specific assignment that I'm asking them to do during the week. So for like the music lesson, um, it'd be things like, it'd be tailored to them. So if it was a music major, I would say maybe you're a trombone player, but classically trained, learn about jazz improv. Um, you have this brother, um, trying to go over that kind of stuff. If you're not a music major, learn more about musicianship and, um, different things you could do with a certain etude with this brother. Um, things like that, and then applying those to different lessons and things like that. Um, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome, thank you. Uh, Katarina, you had something, I believe? Yeah, um, so 
I actually come from one of the pilot chapters. So my, and then I also was a membership candidate the year that my chapter piloted the Road to Wisdom. So essentially what happened was they said, try this new thing and let us know what you think. And our VPM said, what? <laughs> and so basically what he did was he took us through the process and added in as much as he could from the old uh, um, curriculum that they had done um, that went with it or that wasn't duplicated because it was pretty similar um, to what we were doing in terms of at least the informational parts of it. And um, what we found was that through trial and error, there were certain things that we realized that we actually could do without that um, we may have been holding on just for the sake of the word tradition, but we still didn't know why we were doing it. Um, and then there were other things that were traditional that we did want to keep, and, and those are things you send in activity review forms for. And um, I, I don't think that there is a one-size-fits-all curriculum for anybody. I think the Road to Wisdom is amazing, but obviously every chapter goes through different things, and I think that that's why the activity review process is so amazing, because it allows you to add things in that are tailored specifically to your own chapter so that you can kind of put your own spin and, and help take the road to wisdom to the next level in terms of, of um, what you want to do with it. And so for us, we had one tradition that is really, really sacred to our chapter in the seven words and is very, very important to us and um, what we stand for. And when we submitted it and finally got it back, um, I just remember like the feeling of happiness of getting to keep that tradition, but also incorporating it in the road to wisdom. And it actually fits very well together. And I think a lot of chapters struggle just a little bit with um, wanting to kind of do a mixture. It, it seems like we've got this one or the other kind of thing going on. You either love the road to wisdom or you kind of struggle with it. Um, but I don't think there's anything wrong with meshing the two together. And um, that's exactly what the activity review process is. So um, I just think being open to altering things in ways that work for you and, and trying things out um, and trial and error again and being not afraid to fail. So, yeah. And Katarina, you said something so great there because the road to wisdom, two of the big purposes of it, one is to make sure that each member of the organization is receiving the same minimum amount of information because from one chapter to the next pre road to wisdom, what you would find is, for example, my chapter never had a lesson on leadership, never had a lesson on musicianship. And those are two of the things that we stand for. So the road to wisdom helped in helps ensure that every member coming through is being exposed to the same information that's being exposed to our values. On the other hand, it also helps to reduce risk. So we're making sure that activities coming through are being reviewed so that we can assess whether the risk is there or not. Because if you look historically at some of the uh, chapters that have gotten expelled or some of the lawsuits that we've dealt with, um, oftentimes they revolve around membership education. So, um, those are kind of the two reasons why we went with the road to wisdom, but we also understand that chapters have those traditions. And, you know, I think Delta Sigma is a great example because their seven words are, are very sacred to the chapter and they integrate them very nicely now with the road to wisdom. And I think um, you bring up a great point about the fact that it can work together and that if we, if, for some reason we're asking you to change something or we're asking you to, or we're flat out denying something, it's because there's something in there that's violating policy. And so my goal is to work with you and to help you, you know, what was the goal of the activity? Let me work with you and figure out how we can make it fit. Um, let's make sure that it's something that's reflective of the chapter. Um, we um, on the curriculum committee want to be able to work with you to help um, flesh out your ideas to help make it something that's compliant with our policies, but still captures the spirit of what you want to do. So don't hesitate to reach out if you're unsure or are trying something. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of great information um, that, you know, we hope that you have, you know, gained something, some insight on that to sort of um, really reflect on how you all do things within your own chapter. Now, um, if you guys don't have any, any questions as we as we are kind of wrapping up this call, um, my last question here, so I guess sort of a curveball for our panelists, um, I'll kind of shift towards CMEP, um, at least something that, you know, we don't, 
at least I don't hear a lot of conversations on. So I'm just curious, you know, as we are uh, moving, you know, in recruitment, there's a lot of focus on um, membership candidates. There's a lot of focus on the MEP itself. Um, what do you guys do in your chapters that balances that out for the CMEP and the Active Brothers? I'll start. Um, so as VPM, I had a very, very rigorous continuing education um, rubric at, or curriculum. Um, and I think that there's kind of two ways to do it, just depending on whether or not you do spring and fall classes or just, or just spring um, membership classes. We recruit in the fall and we um, do the class in the spring. And so uh, it's very spread out. And so I think one of the biggest things is just making sure that your um, chapter and your active members are constantly aware of all of the information that you're expecting your membership candidates to be aware of. So as the membership candidates are receiving this information and learning this information, I think it's really important that your active chapter is not also learning with them, but that they have already reviewed this information and been refreshed on this information. Because it is not just the VPM's job to teach the, um, the, to teach the membership candidates. Um, it is the entire chapter's job together. So I think that one of the uh, biggest uh, biggest pitfalls that chapters fall into are um, not refreshing the information and not using, I actually didn't even know that there were chapters that don't even continue education past the membership candidate process and uh, because it's just something we've always done. Uh, so I think it's just really, really important to understand that um, if you do have let's say you're like us where you have the class in the spring and you have the fall recruitment season, you can take advantage of that recruitment season to go over and review information that you don't necessarily talk about every year, like the founders and um, the national, how the national officer structure works, the things that you're expected to teach your classes in the spring. If you go over that information in the fall, then your chapter will be more educated on it and will know exactly what what to do when it comes to the spring, all you have to do is say, you know, this is what we're talking about this week with the MC is just make sure you're prepared on it. Um, I hope that I didn't stray too far from the question, but <laughs> that's a, that no, was kind good. of on my Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll take one more response to that and we'll move on to the last couple of questions. So I think Curtis had something. Yeah, um, so I, I can't say that this is gonna be, I, I don't know if this is a thing with like other chapters, but I felt like, since I become a brother at Gamma Nu, um, the the active membership is uh, like super involved in um, candidacy in the way that like a lot of brothers want to go and see this, and it could be a nostalgia thing. It could be like a I want to experience this with you again kind of thing. Um, but yeah, that that happens a lot. And along with that, we have a requirement of um, bringing of of a brother having to go to um, two candidate meetings spread out along the semester. Um, and so there I'm kind of, I feel like I'm teaching um, at like at first the candidates, but I'm also going over things with the brothers. Um, I'm asking them the same questions I'd be asking the candidates. I'm going over discussion, not only from one viewpoint, from many viewpoints. Um, and then from there, along with trying to bring back things from the road to wisdom, trying to, things that, trying to bring back things that they should know and should always know, a lot of our continuing membership education is revolved around um, learning new skills, actually. Um, I think that might be different than um, other chapters in that sense. But for instance, we had one of our brothers did a conducting workshop. He's our drum major. So he did something about field conducting and concert conducting. We've had um, the head librarian of our music library at FSU come in and talk about Zotero, different ways you can um, help yourself whenever you're like writing papers and stuff. Um, yeah, we've kind of had a little bit of everything. Conflict resolution was a big one. Um, so yeah, our, our continuing membership education is definitely more involved than just bringing in the road to wisdom again. Awesome, thank you, thank you. Um, okay, cool. So um, I, I know we have a couple of questions on the on the docket here. Um, so the last question that um, I'll ask our, our panelists here that, um, that have been sent in, sort of a combo here. So we kind of talked about um, you know, membership uh, education and then the recruitment side. Uh, but I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper on, you know, how do we encourage um, our 
our chapter members to look for band members who are truly striving for the highest rather than just identifying the ones that we like the most. Um, and also on that as well, you know, how do we get a, a sense of who do we want to recruit? Like, how do we have these conversations to really define what the chapter is looking for in a membership candidate? This is a passion point for me. I think many of the people on this call know this. I do a workshop called Honoring Outstanding Band Members. I think I've been giving it every Sunday since I've been elected. Um, or you might have come to national convention and seen it. Um, and I, I told Bong to bring this question up so I could plug it. Um, it's um, probably my most favorite workshop that I've developed um, because it really takes a look, a critical look at our documents, at our ritual, um, at some historical documents and what our founders intended um, us to do when we were thinking about membership. And so, um, and then we also talk about recruitment and, and, and using some tools to um, pick the right people. Um, but just in general, um, when I think about the membership selection piece, this should be the most critical conversation that your chapter has, and I can't stress that enough. You are picking the future of your chapter. So you are holding in your hands how successful, successful your chapter has the potential to be in the future. So those conversations that you have about what you want and where you want the chapter to go and what you're looking for are so important to happen before you even start thinking about the people, but just what are you looking for and why? And so you can look to the national constitution and it actually says something in there about what we should look for. We have the second purpose. Our ritual has some very clear things outlined about what we should be looking for. And our founders, um, I show something from the 1924 baton um, and it's something written about why Kevin Capisai, and it talks about three things, musical ability, personality, and scholarship. So we intended for the invitation to membership to be special, to be something that's, that it, it's an honor. It's an honor to be selected. And when we're thinking about what we're looking for, we're looking for good people who love music, who have leadership potential, and good character. And so when we think about those qualities, I encourage chapters to build a rubric, have a list of qualities that are reflective of your chapter and of our ritual, have, create a portrait of a brother of Delta Sigma and list out the qualities that you're, that you're looking for in the people in your chapter, but give the chapter something to be able to develop conversation around so that we know that we're looking at what do these people value and do they believe what we believe? Because you can't, you're not gonna change a person's value system. It's taught by your parents. So people are gonna come in with values and we want to ensure that they hold our values as part of their values or else they're not gonna believe in the fraternity. So for example, a question that people will often ask is, um, do you like service? Or what do you think about service? I challenge you to ask the question, talk to me about how you hold service as a value in your life. Talk to us about how you demonstrated servant leadership in your life. Because they might not have done band service, but they might have done other service things that lets you know, hey, this is a person that doesn't mind giving up their time. And this is somebody that we want, even if you haven't seen them demonstrate XYZ service, because maybe the chapter has it and they don't feel like they need to help. So asking the right questions, having something to have the conversation around. And then when you really are making those votes, knowing that sometimes our friends don't make the best members, that sometimes when we have people that are interested, Kappa Kappa Psi just isn't right for them. And all of that is okay. And it does mean hard conversations, but you also have to remember that it shouldn't be about numbers and it shouldn't be about who we like. It should be about honoring outstanding band members through privilege of membership extended as a reward for technical achievement and appreciation for the best in music. And when your chapter falters in that, sometimes you have to put those words back up there to remind ourselves that we should be picking the best of the best. And your chapter should have something to have a conversation about to be able to do that. Um, the workshop kind of delves more into that. So if you want that, my email is there. Feel free to email me. Um, it's about 50 minutes, so I'm happy to do that. But I think you can tell this is like a super big passion point for me. So I could go on for a while. 
Awesome, I appreciate it. So I know we're uh, running a bit over here. I just have two more quick questions um, for us to kind of consider. And if you need to, to jump off, you know, please feel free. Um, thank you, that question was to me, to me privately. Um, so <laughs> uh, I guess it's really for Jessica here. When will we, uh, we be able to access the updated uh, version of the Road to Wisdom? Um, we have all of our edits to Robert. Um, so um, Hannah and I can check in and see where we are in the process because all of our edits have been given um, to Robert. He had sent us one draft of the Road to Wisdom. We sent him a bunch of edits. Um, some things that I do have that we plan on stylizing to go on the website. One is a VPM checklist that's like two to three pages that really just kind of takes you through step by step if you've never been VPM exactly what you need to do to be successful. Um, so I created that and I've been sending that out. So happy to share that. Um, I also have a sample recruitment and membership selection plan um, that was taken um, from our, um, our colonization documents, actually. It's what we have colonies review um, to submit as part of colonization now. Um, so I'm happy to pass that tool on as well. Um, and then of course, um, the, the workshop, but once um, Road to Wisdom 2.0 is released, um, chapters will receive an email and from myself and we will be posting it on social media. Um, and I am going to be hosting something very similar to what Bong is doing right now, um, where VPMs can come on, we're gonna walk through the changes, we're gonna be able to ask questions, um, talk about those things like how to teach, talk about building a great classroom atmosphere. Um, so we're hoping to get it up as quickly as possible. If you are a chapter that started membership education just use the road to wisdom that's posted now um, we will post um, the final version once it's ready there's not too many changes that there it's going to be conflicting with what's out there if anything we've provided more clarification and more options um, so don't be worried about that either and as you're turning in calendars and activity reviews um, if you're not receiving something and you think you should have um, because Hannah and I there is one email address um, that just will not work and we don't know why. Jotform doesn't like it. Um, but um, if you feel like it's been a while, please email us and we can check in. Um, we're really kind of getting caught up. Um, so um, if you haven't heard from us and you feel like you should have by this point, please email curriculum at kksi.org and we can kind of tell you where you're at. Awesome, thank you. So again, last, last question here. Um, so, you know, we, we talked a lot about the recruitment aspect um, early on and kind of tying it and again in the back here. So what, let's say the example is, you know, you are, you have somebody who is attending events and you just know this person is not an ideal candidate and does not meet what we're looking for after you've had those great conversations. How do you have that conversation with the, with the individual or the individuals about not becoming a member or if it's like through a bid you know if they confront you what are what are the conversations that you have with them hi i've done a lot of this um which is the not fun part i mean there's lots of not fun parts about having lots of members and that means you also have lots of people interested and you have to give out lots of rejections as well um and so in my chapter, that's the VPM and president's job. And it really, really sucks because you want to do the fun stuff where you give out bids and people are like, yay, I'm so happy. But um, we split it up um, just because we usually like to do it within like a three hour time period and everyone's in like 700 different places. But um, so I think the best way to have that conversation is no one should be forever disqualified for from being a brother unless they're like a murderer or something like insane like that um but i or we we can talk about reform on that kind of stuff later but i think if you give people um an example of like hey you're on your phone at rehearsal a lot we think that's not representing the ideals of cap kappa psi if we see improvement from that in the future, we would love to have you and just let them know that you're still interested and just kind of consider that recruitment period just a little bit longer for that person. Um, sometimes people are take that in stride and they do change and they do go on to become great brothers, just maybe a semester or a year later. Um, some people do not 
take that super well. Um, and if they don't take that super well, then um, then they're not embodying, they're not willing to embody the ideals of your fraternity in the first place. And that's just that. Um, that's my advice is just giving them something that they can do and improve on so that one day they can potentially be a brother and just really emphasize that you do want them to be a brother and that it's not anything personal. It's not that the chapter doesn't like them because there's people's friends that don't get bids and it's not that they're disliked by any means. Um, so I think just making that clear, especially you, someone mentioned the information session, making that clear in those information sessions, making that clear at recruitment events that those are the things you're looking for. Awesome, thank you. Anybody else have input on that? I think no? um, you you said something very good there by making it clear. I think that sometimes, um, here's, here's something I've heard from VPMs before. Well, I don't wanna tell them what they're looking for because then they're gonna do it. Well, isn't that the point? That we want people to rise to the occasion, you know? And so um, I think it's important to be super explicit about what you're looking for, to be super explicit about our values, to be super explicit about concrete examples about how we live our values, that we are a values-based organization that is about people that have the shared experience of our ritual and we get to do that through band. And we were built that way. We were built in the image of Bo. Our organization is built on the values of Bo. And so if we, are very clear about that in our events and um, you know share those things what we do how we do it and why we do it especially then we're projecting a very clear image of who we are as an organization and some of those people might just self-select and be like okay this really isn't for me um, but knowing your why and being able to share your why why you choose to be a part of this organization why you choose to hold these values as, as part of who we are and why we continue to stay involved is super important and having those conversations with people about not being a good fit um hannah i think you pointed out something great there about you know something very concrete that you see because if you're having those big conversations and somebody says well i just don't like them that's not good enough and you should press to say, well, we need to talk about what are you seeing? Is it the way they treat the band director? Being on your phone at band, showing up late, um, the way that they treat people, the way that they project themselves on social media, whatever that is, there should be some concrete things there to be able to have a conversation because it shouldn't, it shouldn't just be this completely personal feeling that we can't talk about. There should be some concrete things there. And your conversation should be about, this is what we're looking for and what we value, and this is what we see in the person. And it shouldn't just be what you see. There should also be some very intentional questions about our values to see if their value system lines up with the fraternity's value system. So it should be a combination of things. And then when you're able to have those conversations, knowing that Hannah made a great point saying a first semester freshman might not be ready. And so providing them, you know, some development and direction, you know, still engaging with them, seeing if they want to come and help out with service, inviting people, inviting band members to join you in service. Doesn't have to be a recruitment event, but just inviting people to join you in service and providing additional opportunities um, to see if people are interested or to see if people step up to the plate um, might provide some maturity and some change to be able to consider that person in the future. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, again, thank you um, for all the great questions and the conversations. Um, yes, definitely invite them to uh, intramurals. I agree, volleyball. Um, no, uh, we ran over time and I, I appreciate it, but these are important um, conversations, important questions. We wanna make sure we, we got to them. Um, and a huge shout out to our panelists for, for helping out today. Uh, thank you so, so much. Uh, thank you to all the brothers that joined us today and you know those who had to leave, that's totally okay. Um, if you have future, or if you have questions on, on future topics or specific questions you'd like for us to cover, if you know of brothers or chapters who are doing great work that you know we could interview or highlight on a podcast, on a video, please reach out, let us know. Um, I'm gonna put my email out here as well. Uh, Jessica uh, can be reached at her email, which Jessica Lee at kkside.org um, for specific questions on the road to wisdom. And, um, you know, reach out to your, your district um, 
council members, your, your chapter officers as well, have these conversations. Um, so yeah, that's all I have. Um, panelists, any last comments before we call it a night? No? Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, I'm gonna take a quick picture here just so that I have <laughs> this. All right, on three, one, two, three. Fantastic. All right, have a good night, everybody. See you.